They are about to have a conversation of a groundbreaking proposal <laughs> that is about to shake up the landscape of parenting and workplace. So two days ago, we actually opened the phone lines for you um, to, you know, know your minds. Yesterday, mind. actually. It was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Monday. It was Monday. It was Monday. Yeah. Monday. The days are going fast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to know what you um, think about, you know, the proposed bill of extension of maternity leave mm. and introduction of paternity leave. You shared your thoughts and we agree with you fully. But today in the studio, we actually have the individuals that are spearheading this proposed bill. And joining us in the studio is... Mr. Francis Xavier Kojo Sosu, a human rights lawyer and the MP for Madina constituency. And of course, Eno Quegren, mother of three and founder of Talkative Mom Studios. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's good to have you. You're all welcome. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, listen, let me be shameless. I've been an admirer of the both of you. Exactly. In different exactly. worlds, different, in different spaces ways. for the longest <laughs> time. Exactly. So it's really exciting to have you here. Thank all right. You. But we've also been joined on Zoom uh, by Larissa Akrofi. Um, she's mother of two and founder uh, Working Motherhood Initiative. And then we also have Luther, um, Luther Buidu Asumini. He's a father. And um, we will be having a conversation with all of them as well. All right. So all of you are welcome. And uh, let's get right into the convo this morning. Yeah. All right. So um, let me start with you, Francis. Um, you push a lot of bills in Parliament and a lot That's of... Um, what we hear as private members' bills. Mm. First of all, what's the idea behind this private members' bill thing? And mm -hmm. you know, well, thank you so much for having me. Mm. Um, let me say that uh, until the seventh parliament, I think that was, yeah, the seventh parliament, uh, private members' bills uh, were unknown to uh, the Republic of Ghana or mm. the Parliament of Ghana mm. uh, because. Previous speakers had taken the view that every private member's bill uh, would violate or likely violate Article 108 of the Constitution because that article requires that uh, a bill will not be laid unless uh, it is by the President of the Ga Republic of Ghana if it would have a charge okay. on a consolidated fund. Oh, okay. um, however, in the seventh parliament, mm. Right Honorable Speaker Michael Quay mm. uh, interpreted that article. Uh, to mean that the bill must necessarily charge, you know, or must impose a charge, mm. not the implication of implementation of the bill. Okay. So if the bill says that by this bill you are charging a particular consolidated fund, then you cannot, uh, you know, introduce such a bill. Mm. Uh, and that was strategic because when you go to other jurisdictions, private members introduce bills. Okay. You know, the executive would introduce bills that the executive believes uh, is uh, its priority areas. Mm. If the executive does not consider those matters as That's its priority, priority the executive will not introduce okay. them. So mm -hmm. private members' bill gives the opportunity to all members uh, to look at the peculiar areas that they have interest in mm. and introduce bills mm. uh, in those areas. Mm. And, and, and since then, when I got to parliament, I think I've introduced uh, either individually or by, with some friends, 17 mm. private members' bills. Wow. Uh, and this covers mm. different aspects of our lives. Yeah. Of course, the death penalty mm. bills, yeah. in fact, three of them have passed. Mm. One has presidential assent, okay. uh, and the rest are in various levels Stages, of yeah. processes. You know, okay. It covers victims of sexual violation, tumor in children, and cancer in okay. children. Mm -hmm. That must be covered by national health insurance. Uh, mental health, that mm. might be covered with national health insurance, you know, part of hospitality in my constituency, so yes. interacting with people yeah. a lot in that area. We have 5% employment of persons with disabilities. We are mm. uh, re uh, reforming the legal education in Ghana, compensation uh, for people who are wrongfully arrested mm. and, and convicted, mm. and a number of areas mm. that we've been working on. Of course, the of course this one as the well. Witchcraft, witchcraft bill, too, yes. Yes. tax yes. on yes. parts, yes. you know, pa tax on yes. parts, yes. as well as the extension of maternity leave yeah. and Introduction of paternity okay. so, so this one in particular, yes. I heard somebody making an argument and saying that um, the men don't do anything in the home anyway. So <laughs> if you're going to give them leave, why are you giving them leave? Honestly, I, I have heard others say that. I mean, uh, with all due respect to everyone, mm. I think it would be uh, very 
Uh, I don't know whether I should say bluntly because sometimes Ghanaians don't like things said Same bluntly. bluntly yeah. But however, mm. I think that it's only irresponsible parents mm. that may think that men do nothing yeah. when it comes to childbirth. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm a father of four, mm. uh, two boys, two girls. Um, and I did something. Yeah. I mean, at the delivery bed, I was there. Okay. I, okay. I had to take days Close off to, you. to mm -hmm. be with my, ma yeah. my, my wife, mm -hmm. you know, because times are changing. Yeah. In this day and age, mm. it's not like the traditional home where mm. you always can have that. Like, your mother mm. come to join yes. you or your auntie yes. come to join you. Yes. And so the first source of support yeah. it's your, is your it's spouse. Your spouse. Mm -hmm. not, 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 I mean, what your spouse will do for you, mm. Your house girl won't do for you. Yeah. Your your nanny won't do for you mm. because you need to be there. Yeah. There are times you have childbed and you have tests. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. right? Uh, even if you did a natural, you, you know, birth. Have tests. And this test, uh, somebody needs to attend to those yeah. wounds. Yeah. So who would do that yeah. apart from your spouse? Mm. And so the men have critical role to play. It's mm. only those who have overlooked mm. this role yeah. over time that thing that men will not, mm. you know, Absolutely. do things like that. Yes. Right. right. So, you know, to, um, I know you are actually an um, advocate for um, maternal health yeah. and you have um, platforms that actually um, help women, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to these issues. But as a mother, can you share your personal experience when it comes to um, parental leave? Okay. So for me, I have never worked in corporate. Mm -hmm. I've always worked for myself. So when I say that I'm very passionate about this bill, it has nothing to do with me, mm -hmm. but it has everything to do with the women on my platform. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I started out um, helping mothers, yes. and then I realized that it was very important to involve the dads. Mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 for, for parenting, it has to be you know, both the, the yeah. father and the mother. Mm -hmm. In my home, I see the role that my husband plays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever he travels, I see how the boys act. And then, you know, when your dad comes, it's a different story. Yeah. Like, you need that in the home. Mm. And any time that is, is lost, mm -hmm. it affects the children. Mm. Right. Um, you know, gone are the days when fathers were not present. Mm. Mm -hmm. Today, that argument is flawed. Mm. I mean, it's very outdated. A lot of men are very hands-on. Mm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we are normalizing it every single day. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when it even comes to my business, for instance, I was forced to include infant care. Because yes. it got to mm -hmm. a point where we had mothers who had started work after three months mm -hmm. and they had absolutely nowhere to, mm. to, to, to take their the, 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 children. Yeah. Because we don't have the system where the grandmothers are you know, present to help mm. the, um, the, the, the babies like yeah. we did in the past. Now the grandmothers are still working. Mm. Um, there's, there's just a lot of things happening now that isn't happening wasn't yeah. happening back there yeah. then. And when it comes to even care, it's very important to get someone that you trust. Mm. But then, um, having a nanny was, you know, it was free. My mom had, yeah, we, we grew up with two nannies mm -hmm. that were never paid. Okay. You know, they just <laughs> live there. They, they are happy to have yeah, a Yeah, they're happy to be food. there. They, are, they get yeah. a nice place to get stay nice and sleep. Yeah. And then when you, are, when you are going off to marriage yeah. or you're going to start mm. to work, then they'll yeah. give you a lump sum nice yeah. and then you mm -hmm. leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now, you know, you have to pay these yeah. nannies. Um, most of them want to go back to school. Mm -hmm. They don't stay for yep. too long yep. and, and things like that. So it's so important for the mothers to get a chance to bond with their kids at least the first mm. six months, mm -hmm. you know, especially because we are advocating for exclusive breastfeeding. Yeah. That is something that all the public health nurses, uh, um, you know, are, all the time, mm. every August we hear yeah. it, yeah. six months breastfeeding. I'm saying if there's six months exclusive breastfeeding, then, then why? Oh, I get it. Why are you saying yes, that the mother should go back to work yeah. after three months? Yes, yeah. yes, because it's six months it's exclusive. Six months. Mm -hmm. yes. exclusive mm -hmm. I get yeah. it. So I get we it. Have to, it's a very important right. bill that mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, yeah. we are pushing here. Right. Let's okay. talk to Larissa, Larissa. Akrofi. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Larissa, talk to us about what the work you're doing, um, Working Motherhood Initiative, and uh, what you're you're hoping for as far as this bill that's in parliament is concerned okay so the working motherhood initiative is something i recently started um, based on my own experiences mm. as a working mom and it's basically dedicated to championing the cause of maternity protection mm. for working mothers throughout Africa. Mm. And um, the mission is really to enhance awareness and respect for maternity protection laws and ensuring that all working mothers, both current and future, 
are supported mm. and recognized for their dual roles. And so that's really um, what the Working Motherhood Initiative is, is about. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, since you started the organization, what, sort of, what are some of the challenges or roadblocks you've come up against? We've received so many concerns. And um, like Honorable said, um, the, the issue on um, the arguments around the introduction of paternity leave. Mm. Um, some have argued that the introduction of this um, paternity leave may not be utilized fully due yeah. to the cultural norms yeah. that prioritize a mother's role in childbearing mm. or rearing. And um, the cu cultural norms evolve all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And legislation often plays a crucial role in this evolution. Mm. And so by introducing paternity leave, the bill will go a long way to promote the idea that child rearing is a shared responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. over time, this will really help to shift societal expectations yeah. and norms. And so it's it's about evolution. Mm. Once right. legislation is there, there will always be an evolution. All right, so uh, Larissa, um, let's go back to um, Eno's post that you made on social mm. media. That's why I follow you, because you're very accountable. You let us know what's going on. Um, you, you actually um, put out a post, you know, about this issue, right. and then how you reached out to Larissa, and then how you guys thought it was important to reach out to um, Honorable. Oh, yeah. So, why Honorable? Why him? Okay, so, um, actually, Larissa reached out to me mm -hmm. um, and told me that, you know, this is a, a cause that she mm -hmm. was very passionate about, yeah. and I said, I'm, I've always been passionate about yeah. extending mm -hmm. maternity leave. So she said, in order not to duplicate efforts, let's find out if there's already a bill that mm. is you okay. know, in, the, in the process of being passed okay. and then let's join in. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she found, she researched and then she found um, honorable, mm. mm -hmm. in, honorable's bill, yeah. like that was you know, in the process. And then, and then she reached out to me and said, you know what? We have to join forces oh, and he wow. was so mm. gracious mm. to include us yeah. and that was one of the things i was even telling him right before we came on <laughs> there that <laughs> for me a lot of times when it comes to you know members of parliament and mm. all that we always feel removed yeah. from mm. them True. but i'm so happy that he involved us mm. because ultimately the people have to be involved, involved right. yeah. you know so yeah. um i'm just happy that yeah. our voices are being heard right. i mean it's a true expression of government of the people, by the but people, exactly. really. That's what's a collaborative mm -hmm. effort, yes. you know. I want to ask um, Luther. Luther. Luther, now, there's, 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 um, you're always, you know, punching holes in some of these things. People are asking questions that fathers don't do much anyway in their home. Um, and so why are we giving them paternity leave? What are your thoughts, Luther? Um, so that argument is flawed. I remember when my wife was in labor, yeah. I was in the support system. Like um, Honorable said, mm. he, has, he had been in the theater or in the, in the labor room. I was also there. Mm. And going in and out of, going in and out of the, the theater and coming back home, yeah. it can be the same state. A lot go through your mind. And now you have to be the support for your wife mm. and pick up the slack where, you know, when, when once she comes home, she can cook. You mm. can't do much in the house now. You have to be the other parent who's going to support her. Yeah. And um, fortunately, my my job then was a fully remote job, so I was able to really do these things to help support her. Mm. Um, when we came home, she couldn't walk for about wow. uh, a week or two. Wow. And sit properly. Mm. So I was doing everything. And, um, I, and I could imagine if we had this bill passed then, um, mm. I would have been able to time work yeah. and be able to really, um, commit myself to yeah. the yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's a laudable um, bill and we look forward to it being implemented and changing lives of families home. Mm. Right, mm. right. Yeah. Uh, Honorable, so how do you actually um, see parental leave intersecting with um, the broader topic of human rights? Um, yeah, so that's a very good question. Uh, you know, when I mean, the, the human right generally uh, has to do with the, the guarantees that we have on account of being human. Mm. Mm. So childbirth is a natural thing. Mm. So it's a natural right mm. that comes. So uh, if, if we are the right holders, then the state becomes a duty bearer. Mm. So the state has an obligation to uh, institute policies and frameworks that allows us to enjoy these natural rights. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
anything you do that puts impediment on the way of women giving birth, mm. women having the kind of support system they need at the time of birth, mm. children having an opportunity to bond, yeah. children growing up in a natural environment where both parents are available, mm. anything that takes away the traditional stereotypes mm. of it's women who, who must be give birth. At home. And, yeah. and, and, then the state is guaranteeing the enjoyment of these natural rights, mm -hmm. you know. And so it is a fundamental right. In fact, the Investor Declaration of Human Rights uh, makes it clear that family is a basic unit of society. Mm -hmm. okay. If you take the African, uh, uh, this in the, uh, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, it confirms mm -hmm. that. When you take our own constitution, it confirms that. And if mm -hmm. you look at the parental right proposal that we have, it is consistent with Article 17 of our constitution. Because Article 17 says that we should remove all forms of discrimination. Now, no one shall be discriminated against, against on yeah. grounds of gender. Yeah. And so I've had people who say that, oh, well, in fact, I've had yeah. some women say that, mm -hmm. oh, why do you want men to also have parental leave? <laughs> and I said, well, mm. it's the same thing. So the advocacy in terms of the bridging the gender gap has mm. to do with protection for both men and women, women mm. yeah. you know, in the mm. appropriate context. Mm. And I think this is one of those contexts where mm. we place, but of course, when look at a proposal, men are supposed to have leave between seven days mm. and four weeks. Four, yeah. And then the seven days is to allow them for the first seven days for mm. them to be with this baby. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the late night cries, yeah. if you yeah. are yeah. a very responsible man sleeping mm -hmm. by your wife yeah. when, with this baby, mm. late night you wake up, yeah. you know, to attend to the yeah. baby and all that. So this seven days will be very critical yeah. for men mm -hmm. under those circumstances. So you're a man after my so, own heart. <laughs> <laughs> so I think these are the issues and these are the intersections. Yeah. And you know, the, the intersection between what Eno and um, uh, Larissa? Uh, Larissa does mm. is the relationship between advocacy and policy. Mm -hmm. okay. Advocacy must lead to policy changes, sure. okay. right? Otherwise, we have a lot of people championing a lot of causes through social media, mm. but it doesn't find place mm -hmm. on the table of policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think what we're doing right here mm. is translating advocacy to into table. policy. Okay. Okay. And then that's where you bring about social changes. Change. Yeah, yeah. so they are really doing a great job yeah. with this intersection. Yes. Well, we have a, a video we want to show you, um, Dr. Promise E. Sefogan, he is a consultant, obstetrician, gynecologist, and a fertility specialist with Shape Healthcare Medical Center. Here are some thoughts from him. Both medically and from the obstetric point of view, we deeply support the call to extend maternity leave from the present three months to up to six months. And one of the important medical reasons derived from the value we have determined as pertaining to breastfeeding, especially exclusive breastfeeding. We know from medical background that babies who are exclusively breastfed for a minimum of six months get all the benefits including minimize the risk for diarrheal diseases, stunted growth, and exclusive breastfeeding, the longer they're able to go, minimum six months, helps them to develop the brain and neurocognitive function remarkably compared to those who have breastfed exclusively for shorter periods, which is why, for instance, the national recommendation is to do exclusive breastfeeding for minimum of six months. And we know that in this country, more than 90% of workplaces don't have the conducive environment where the mothers who have given birth, fresh mothers, can excuse themselves in between work to breastfeed and come back. We don't have that. Very few workplaces have that provision. And so if we're able to extend the maternity leave for six months, then the babies can be guaranteed of that time of mother infant pair at home. So we can have the benefits of prolonged exclusive breastfeeding and the nation tends to benefit in the long run additionally mothers after delivery need time to recover the woman goes through a lot of psychological emotional problems as a result of the pregnancy and in this country we have found that perinatal depression which is depression following pregnancy or during the pregnancy and soon after delivery affects as high as 50.4 percent of mothers in ghana and treating that requires family support, it requires time, it requires the mother in the presence of the family to also occasionally maybe require psychological therapy. And these will need time. So that having adequate time on maternity leave enables us to put in place all these interventions that would improve the maternal mental health. And that has great relevance 
as far as the baby's development and cognitive function is concerned. Also, when we have the mother spend time at home, just like pertains in so many other countries for six months of paid leave, they tend to develop the infant mother bonding and that holds great value for supporting the neuro and the social development of the infant compared to when the mothers have to rush out and leave the babies. The babies have the risk of being fed formula a little earlier and that has increases for diarrheal diseases and the baby's immune function is not well developed yet and those will be bigger healthcare costs to the healthcare system and there's so every reason to increase the current period of maternity leave from three months to about six months. All right, so that was Dr. Promise um, E. Sefoga, who's a consultant, obstetrician, gynecologist, and fertility specialist at Shape Healthcare Medical Center. And he's also the general secretary of the Society of um, Obgen of Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I think this is a very important conversation it is. that we are yeah, having, and absolutely. not a lot of people know how deep it is. Yeah. It is actually very deep. Yeah. yeah. Now, when my daughter was born, mm -hmm. in fact, I thank God for the for two conversations that I had with two different people before my daughter was born. One of them, the the gentleman said to me, he's a doctor, he's an, he was also an OBGYN, mm -hmm. and he says, um, make sure that you are present mm -hmm. from day one. Mm -hmm. Let not only your daughter, mm -hmm. but your wife know that you're present let mm. them feel your presence mm. from day one mm. the other person who was a mother figure said to me you need to be there when your baby is being born mm. Mm. okay right. now the day she was being born i honestly i ran through my head different scenarios and i said oh god i pray i don't faint oh god i pray i don't faint oh god I That's, that was my prayer. oh god i pray i don't faint because i've been in hospitals before with somebody who eventually passed away oh. and and the, and when the person was talking about their ordeal they had been through the last few weeks mm. my knees became shaky right. there in the hospital you know and i knew i, I felt like I was, I was passing out i had to dash out of there and go and lean on the wall to prevent myself from passing out so i was, I was worried but thankfully, as I stood there holding her hand and I was watching my baby coming out, I stood there. There was no panic. There was no, I just felt that you, you use your responsibility to mm. be there for both of them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. Look, my, the bond between myself and my daughter is crazy. Mm. You know, and she's 16 mm. in wow. a few weeks, right? Mm. Actually, a few days. <coughs> she's turning 16. Mm. And I think about it, and I'm like, what would it have been like if I wasn't there? Mm. You know? Mm. Yeah, so I, mm -hmm. I, I'm all for what you're doing. Yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. And we're supporting you fully. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I also Thank think you. it's very important because men have to be able to see yeah. the women go through childbirth yes. to appreciate Get the women. them. Yes. Mm. Because for a lot of times, we don't wear what we've been through. Mm. Mm. So once you True. see it, you say, oh, True. I saw you know you mm. bring out a, an actual human being yeah. out yeah. you heal through all these things yeah. you need time to rest yeah. you know and I'm, I'm sure that is part of the reason why you are passing yeah. this bill because of you know yeah. the respect yeah. that you you yeah. have for women after mm. they've gone through okay. yeah. I want to talk to Luther briefly mm -hmm. Luther um, so you know for the first year um, I told my wife um, that listen you you spend nine months carrying this little girl give me the next one year every night don't bother waking up the nights are for me okay so as part of the plan because of the whole breastfeeding thing I made sure that her bottles were always filled you know with breast milk and in the fridge chilling nicely in the evening in the night whatever time she wakes up I warm it you know check the temperature of my hand make sure that it's not too hot and then I, I feed her every night, I change her nappies, everything else, and then put her back to bed and all of that. Tell me a little bit about your experience. Of course, you can't share everything, but just, just, just a little bit, a snippet of your experience. What's it been like? Okay, right. So um, when we first came home, uh -huh. um, when she wasn't able to do much, yeah. so I was the one doing most of the night duty. So um, I would change diaper. When he cries at 1 a.m., I, I, I would change his diaper, feed him. Um, 
called him to his sleep, they are putting him back to sleep. Then okay. in the morning, mm. when she's out, then she's able to maybe breastfeed yeah. directly from her breast. Then. Yeah, but um, when she resumed um, work, mm. she's a banker, um, doing quite well um, being a banker. So I had to make a decision mm. now, an opportunity that to let go. Um, because I had other part time jobs that I was doing, um, consultancy roles. So I had to let that go because we didn't have anyone to take care of him. So I said, okay, um, my main job is a fully remote job. So yeah. I'm at home and take care of so, But the, from the third month to the 13th month, I was the one primarily taking care of him during the day okay. while she was at work. Mm. And uh, I'll be in team meetings, he'll be crying, I'll be holding. <laughs> wow. Wow. Everything. Wow. So, when 13 months old, then we enrolled him in school. Super. And that was deep a bit. Yeah. So, um, the fathers, um, the new age fathers are, are becoming more of um, nursing fathers, yeah. as we also have nursing yeah. mothers with the important role of keeping the families together. Fantastic. Right. Thank you. Right, right. Thank you so much. Um, Larissa, uh, before we let you go, how do you actually balance your responsibilities as a mother with your advocacy? Um, and particularly in advocating for improved parental leave? It's not easy. <laughs> um, and I was actually going to talk about how I experienced you know, maternity leave myself, having been a mother of, of two. Um, maternity leave for me was, I viewed it as a very important time for me to recover from childbirth mm. and bond with my, my children. And um, I had to adjust to the new de demands of motherhood and it was really challenging. And um, even though it was challenging, there was joy and wonder, but also exhaustion and then concern about my about the impact of my absence on my career. Mm. And so balancing the desire to be with my, my children with the anticipation of returning to work was really, really challenging. Yeah. Um, but I was really fortunate to have um, supportive employers who really valued my my contribution and then saw my time away as not a loss, mm. but as an investment. And I understand that wow. um, my experience isn't universal. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing through um, the Working Motherhood Initiative, so mm. that uh, we can offer women uh, with the uh, to raise awareness of their rights and then also support them so that they can also have um, some of these positive experiences mm. with maternity. Mm. So it's definitely challenging balancing what I'm doing and then being a mother. I think it's the same for all mothers, um, but we have to do what we have to do. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Fantastic. Thank you. So, yeah. So w where are we now with the bill? Um, so currently um, the bill mm. is with the drafting mm. department of parliament. Okay. Mm. So uh, when you initiate a bill, like I did uh, way back in the, I think it was in October 2023 when mm. I first initiated a bill, uh, parliament will first go through a process of validating okay. mm -hmm. the proposals and the parliament will cause to be done what they call the fiscal impact analysis. Mm. Then parliament will then recommend uh, what should be the next step. So parliament recommended that we conduct a stakeholders engagement mm. on the bill. Mm. Now, the essence of the stakeholders uh, engagement is to validate the draft okay. that we have. Okay. So if people have views, so for example, the proposal is for four months, mm. but many have advocated for six months. Yeah. Okay. And so okay. during the stakeholder mm. meeting, a case could be made mm. for that. Mm. Um, others have asked for the need to um, extend, um, or the need to include in the bill, mm. Um, remote work for yeah. organizations okay. that can afford mm. that, mm. particularly when women are lactating mm. mothers. Yes. Yes. And so not every woman wants to remove their breasts right. in, in public yeah. and trying to. Yeah. And, so, and so several other proposals mm. and mm -hmm. counter proposals are coming. So mm. the stakeholders engagement is what is going to give us the opportunity to really have a conversation okay. around, around this, after it. which Super. a final bill mm. will be drafted, okay. then gazetted, okay. and mm. uh, read the first time and referred to the Gender Committee of Parliament. Okay. Right. And our hope and target is that we'll be able to do this before the year is over. Okay, yeah. yes. fantastic. Yeah. Final words from you, um, talkative mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep this brief, even okay. though I'm talkative. <laughs> so, um, for me, this bill is very important. Mm. Uh, I don't think you have to be a parent to, to res um, resonate with it. Mm. I think that it's important that 
this we see this bill through and yeah. it's passed yeah. um, I believe that it's it says a human rights issue mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the developing uh, developed countries mm -hmm. have been able to do this extended even for a year yeah. and it has not collapsed the country exactly. so um, <laughs> let's not be too dramatic about mm -hmm. it yeah. this is absolutely normal yeah. it should be passed and let's see it through yeah I love it. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You You're welcome. Welcome. Say thank you to you, Francis. Mm -hmm. Thank you to you, Eno. And thank you to Luther and Larissa as well for joining us this morning.